that question of the 2611 terror attacks on Mumbai came up again this week and surely a prime question is why Pakistan would do such a thing and once done why it would then refuse to act against perpetrators and their masters. The question is not new. What is new is that this time it was raised by former Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and the present Pakistani government's response to pretend that he had not said what he had to suggest that he was quoted out of context, that old line again. No one in the world quite believes these continuing Pakistan denials. Why is Pakistan determined to stay this course? Pakistan ये बात हमें कबूल नहीं है भाई आओ फिर एक कॉमी कमिशन बनाओ एक कॉमी कमिशन बनाओ आओ फिर इसका हिसाब किताब अब हो जाए मुझे भी मैं भी वहां पे आऊंगा वो लोग भी आए जो मुझे गद्दार कहते हैं ताकि एक तरफ पाकिस्तान के 22 करोड़ आम भी देख रहे हो पूरा मुल्क देख रहा हो और फिर वो कमीशन जो है वो अपनी रिपोर्ट दे जो मुजरिम है a word on this with our Zaka Jacob. Zaka, thanks for joining us. Now, we have a remarkable statement from Nawaz Sharif. What is behind this? Is he genuinely keen to steer Pakistan away from this course of support to terrorism by its own agencies, by non-state actors? Or are there domestic political compulsions behind this kind of statement? Well, it is quite a remarkable statement that uh, Nawaz Sharif made. I don't think it's, it was born out of any great desire to, uh, you know, change the course that his country has adopted over the last 20, 30 years or so. Uh, I think this was more to do with domestic politics. Nawaz Sharif wanted to sort of uh, put the army generals in Rawalpindi on the spotlight by suggesting that, look, there's no way these 10 uh, terrorists from Pakistan could have gone to Mumbai and killed over 150 people without anybody in Pakistan knowing about it. So clearly, he wanted to put the generals under pressure. There's a feeling uh, within the PMLN and particularly the leadership of the PMLN that the army is the one that, for want of a better phrase, fixed the Supreme Court bench which removed uh, Nawaz Sharif as Prime Minister on those corruption charges in the Panama Gate scandal, citing what is a very less cited uh, clause in the Pakistani constitution. So that feeling of, you know, uh, the fact that he was cheated at the hands of the army has always been there. What is the kind of damage control that the Pakistan government has put in place over this statement and what likely next from Nawaz Sharif or for Nawaz Sharif? Well, there has been some amount of damage control. The National Security Council met uh, right after this statement was made. Uh, the, pri the current Prime Minister, Shahid Kagan Abbasi, has spoken to Nawaz Sharif. But I think, um, and Nawaz Sharif has also said that, you know, his, his statement was uh, misreported and misconstrued and so on and so forth. But, but really, I think uh, what Nawaz Sharif is looking for is some kind of assurance from the generals that A, uh, he will be let off the hook in these corruption cases. And more importantly, uh, you know, his political career seems to have come to a bit of a dead end. I think he wants to ensure that if not his, at least his chosen political heir, his daughter, Maryam Nawaz, is able to take forward his political legacy and that her career, her political career is not stunted in any fashion. So I think he's expecting or at least hoping to extract some kind of assurance from the military leadership on this. Quite apart from India's concerns, would it not seem better for Pakistan for its own sake to take some action here? It would win international credibility. It would score a diplomatic point against India from its point of view and really take the country out of the rut of India hatred that it is now cornered into. Is there any sign of any such awareness growing within Pakistan? Well, the big challenge, of course, is for Pakistan. It's not so much for India because the immediate concern for Pakistan, of course, is the uh, grey listing that has been done in the Financial Action Task Force. That decision is up for review end of June. Uh, they could potentially blacklist Pakistan, and if they do, uh, it could potentially really hamper Pakistan's international financial obligations, uh, the international established banking channels uh, that Pakistani banks as well as Pakistani financial institutions are allowed to access. Uh, so clearly, Pakistan is a lot, of, lot at stake uh, in showing the world that it is serious about cracking down on terror. And 2611 is as big as it gets because it happened on, on foreign soil, it happened on Indian soil. It led to the death of not just Indian citizens, but also 
uh, uh, foreign citizens, Americans, Israelis, what have you. Thanks, Zaka, for sharing your thoughts. And we know, of course, that the worst case scenario and the more likely one we have reason to fear is that Pakistani attacks into India will continue, particularly into Kashmir. But talking Kashmir, the people are suffering. The chief minister is very, very concerned, as of course she would be. And she spoke exclusively to our man in Srinagar, Mufti Isla. Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mahbubha Mufti has the toughest job in the country. But today she feels vindicated because center has announced a ceasefire. Ma'am, your first reaction, congratulations to you for pursuing this. Well, I think, you know, it is uh, something, uh, the credit should go to the people of the state and uh, all the parties who participated in the all-party meeting and there was a consensus was built on this, that there has to be cessation of operations by the forces, especially during the month of Ramadan, so that people feel a sense of relief. And I'm, you know, thankful to the Prime Minister Modi ji and also the Home Minister Rajnath ji for taking, you know, personal interest uh, in uh, this and, uh, you know, making it, uh, you know, uh, making this uh, cessation of uh, operations possible. Uh, Ma'am, uh, they've announced it for period of Ramadan, which is one month. I'm sure that you would like it to be extended because Amarnath Yatra is taking place. Well, I hope there is a positive response from the other side. You know, the Pakistan should also think about it in the same way as a holy month of Ramadan so that people should get some relief. Even the militants, you know, should uh, give a positive response. We are, I, I mean, I hope that there is some kind of positive contribution on Pakistani side and on the sides of, you know, from uh, militant side so that there is a full-fledged, you know, cessation of hosti host uh, hostilities from the both the sides, on both the sides. And people, you know, this, this, there is an end to this bloodshed that has been happening for so many years now. So uh, a lot depends on the other side also. I know that you have been pursuing the army, the, the police also as head of the unified command also to kind of hold fire and not go aggressive. But clearly, uh, this is a huge step. Will it have impact on the ground if militants also agree? Although there is also this sad news which is coming that apparently Lashkar has re re rejected this. Well, see, this is something for the people, you know, of the state to think, you know, if there is a, you know, stoppage of uh, operations on the, on, on the, from the side of the forces. So if the militants still continue to attack, that means, you know, they don't want to end this bloodshed. That means, you know, the ball is in their court now. Now what's going to be their response? Because if they uh, don't stop it, if they don't, you know, response or uh, receive this, uh, this um, unilateral cessation of operations uh, from this side positively and still continue to, you know, attacks, uh, then uh, it's very unfortunate for the people of uh, my state, you know, who are getting killed each and every day. And it will, you know, will not have the desired result that we are looking for. Young and educated boys joining militancy, is it a cause of worry because these kids, after all, you know, when there is an encounter, they get killed also. Although I know that police is trying to make them surrender. That was a policy under your government. Any local boy, any young boy, whether he is educated, whether he is illiterate or he is, uh, you know, employed, you know, joining militancy is a cause of worry for us because ultimately we lose these kids to the you know, uh, to the violence. So I don't, no mother, I mean, I'm also a mother of two daughters, so no mother would like to see her kids getting killed like this. And, uh, you know, we hope that this this uh, step of from the central government today to stop these um, uh, military operations for this month of Ramadan has a positive impact. Pakistan has a huge role in this because they, after all, are a party and they have apparently links with militants also they could perhaps play a hand in this. Would you make an appeal to them yeah, also? I would definitely appeal, make an appeal to Pakistan that let them, you know, contribute positively in this, you know, uh, this uh, decision that has been taken by the government of India. Do you think that if, you know, peace prevails in the valley, the next logical step would be perhaps to hold a dialogue, a whole process of dialogue? Let's take one step at a time because I think it's too early. Let's see how this, you know, step uh, taken by the government of India, you know, what kind of response we get from the other side and also how much we are able to restore the confidence of the people. And a word now with Mufti in Srinagar. Mufti, thanks for bringing us that interview with the Chief Minister. But on this ceasefire, it might not, we fear, be as successful as you'd like it to be. But is the very move 
towards such a ceasefire in the Ramzan days coming from the government seen as coming to some extent, at least by some people. You're right, it's not complete. Uh, while as the Home Ministry has said that there should be cessation of hostilities in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, clearly suggesting that army will not move uh, for operations. But so far, what we've seen on the ground is extremely disturbing because both the militant outfits as well as separatists have said no uh, to government announcement. And they've said actually uh, that, uh, you know, this cannot be uh, a one month ceasefire. But uh, for that first, the government of India needs to accept that Jammu and Kashmir is a disputed uh, territory. Uh, clearly, uh, you know, before it would take off, uh, there were some disruptions, there were some hiccups. Uh, but clearly what we saw yesterday on Thursday night, there were a lot of attacks here in Srinagar and outside uh, Srinagar. Uh, but the other part of the story is really uh, Mahbubah Mufti, uh, how she was able to convince both Prime Minister and Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh into accepting uh, that there should be some kind of a relief to the people because uh, the politicians here, especially in the valley, were at least seeing an opportunity in this, that if this uh, ceasefire could have really been built, they could have easily been able to go to their respective constituencies to touch base. Uh, remember that since 2016, uh, after the killing of Burhanwani, almost every politician is finding it extremely difficult to go uh, to his or her constituencies because there's so much of anger. Uh, last time around when uh, some MLAs tried to touch base with their constituencies, they were hooted out, they were stoned. So, uh, Bahabubha Mufti and clearly uh, her, her people in the PDP were expecting that if uh, this ceasefire was really built for a few months, uh, they could have easily uh, again gone to the people. But it is not in the interests of Pakistan that this ceasefire should succeed and they call the shots, don't they, so far as the militants are concerned? I would disagree with you, Sanjay, here, because I think that ceasefire is in the interest of Pakistan also because it also needs to fight its own terrorism. Look at the casualties its army is taking while fighting terrorists inside Pakistan. That said, Pakistan would have really loved if there would have been some kind of a truce on the borders with on its eastern front but uh, clearly inside Kashmir Pakistan is happy with the situation that it is uh, you know for the last two years we've seen some 740 casualties that also include some soldiers also but mainly these are Kashmiri militants as also civilians who have been killed so this is a situation where the entire Kashmir is boiling and it's to the liking of Pakistan because it wants to fish in the troubled waters here and uh, clearly they would like that there's no pause to it because anti-India sentiment, anti-army sentiment is extremely high here in the valley. Uh, there has been a casualty of a BSF officials and there's been some seven civilians who have been uh, injured uh, on the international border. So clearly, uh, ceasefire not to the liking of Pakistan here, especially here inside the Kashmir, although on its eastern uh, front, it would have really liked that there should have been some kind of a truce, uh, but Pakistan pretty much uh, happy with what is going on in Kashmir. And they really want this situation where the pot is boiling because then, you know, it, it, it can really experiment with uh, how uh, the Azadi sentiment goes uh, in the valley. Does the mood appear any different in the valley during these Ramzan days? And the mood in Kashmir has so much to do with the politics. Uh, you know, th those militant activities really taking place, there's been no stop to that. And what we're looking at towards the weekend is that Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, visits Jammu and Kashmir for two days and we've seen already heightened tensions here in the valley. Tomorrow, that is on Saturday, the Horiyat is planning rallies here. They've already said that uh, there should be a total band call across the Kashmir. And, uh, you know, what is happening is that the police is also going to respond to this. They're pr probably going to announce uh, some restrictions in the valley. All in all, the tension really building up. And when, uh, you know, a lo lot of people across uh, the country uh, think that uh, things are changing in Kashmir, let me tell you on the ground and from the ground that uh, there's no change in the mood, unfortunately. Thanks, Mufti. And we hope you bring us news ahead of a peaceful Ramzan period in the valley. And now to head into a very short break before we find our way to Bollywood. Our works speaks rather than, you know, me saying about the film.
once you see the film you've seen the trailer but i can talk right you can is outstanding in the film outstanding it means outstanding means like he's phenomenal in the film mastered the look Welcome back. Of late, when you think Salman Khan, you think black bucks as the feature in Rajasthan, as the figure in courtrooms. Now that that seems out of the way, the star is back in the race to the box office into race three. I mean, what do I say? Mamu is my angel. Next thing I know, Mamu calls him. Mamu. What a comeback! Not Bobby Deol anymore, Body Deol. But he's he is Bobby the Body Bomb. Our works speaks rather than you know me saying about the film. Once you see the film, you've seen the trailer. But I can talk, right? You can. He's outstanding in the film. Outstanding means outstanding means like he's phenomenal in the film. Mastered the look. <laughs> It seemed like one big mutual admiration society at the trailer launch of Salman Khan's upcoming film, and the actors seemed to be too caught up with showering praises on each other. Bobby Deol, who will be seen in a film after a while, was candid enough to admit that he is glad to have finally got some work. I haven't worked for so many years, and it's just—it's the best thing in my life is to work, and I was working, and uh, it, I had a great time. It was great fun working with everyone. Like for example, Remo, I worked with him when he used to be an assistant dancer, yep. and today he was directing me because he's done such great work himself. And working with Ramesh ji again, I mean, Ramesh ji forgot me after Nakab, but he remembered me after a long time. When it came to answering a question on whether the actor was worried about the money riding on him after his recent conviction and subsequent bail by the Jodhpur Sessions Court. In the 1998 Black Buck Fortune case, Salman was at his evasive best. Did you think that I was going to go on forever? No. Oh, thank you. Sorted. We go back. Seriously. Because I was worried. When asked to comment on two heinous incidents like the Kathua and Unnao rape and murder, Salman did not mince his words. जो हो रहा है बच्चों के साथ बहुत गलत हो रहा है एंड आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ़ शुड टेक अ स्टैंड ऑन दिस वन एंड गेट दिस स्टॉप राइट नाउ एएसएपी अभी खत्म करो कैसे भी इट विल बी इंटरेस्टिंग टू सी इफ द कास्ट व्हिच सीम्ड ऑल फन एंड गेम्स ऑन स्टेज कैन ड्रॉ आउट अ कन्विंसिंग परफॉर्मेंस व्हेन द फिल्म इज आउट इन थिएटर्स ऋतुराज सीएनएन न्यूज़ 18 रेसेस डोंट ऑलवेज एंड अप एज इंटेंडेड एज वी हैव सीन इन कर्नाटका ऑन दैट एंड ऑन मोर स्टे विद अस हियर ऑन न्यूज़ 18